Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a video from my backyard plant propagation series. Uh, last week, maybe five days ago or so, I put this flat of uh, lantana into this new greenhouse that I've built this season. And uh, it's kind of my test flat, really, for, uh, these are super, super resilient, and root super, super fast, so I wasn't worried about them if I, my irrigation's off or whatever. This tray got very heavy over the course of the last week, and so I'm adding too much water. Uh, there's a balance here between the amount of water you use and the frequency with which it comes on because we need to keep the leaves on these rooted cuttings or unrooted cuttings moist. But if we're putting too much water on, we can end up rotting the bottom of the cutting by keeping the tray too wet. So that's where that balance is. Uh, there's two ways to reduce the amount of water you're using. You can obviously uh, extend the amount of time between intervals, between the amount of time the water's coming on. And uh, I've done that, but then at that point, you need to keep a close eye on your cuttings and make sure they're not drying out too much, that that interval's not too long and uh, you're, you're not stressing the top of the cutting. Uh, the other way to reduce the amount of water you're putting on is to run it uh, less time when it does come on. And right now I've got it on, I've, I've gone out to uh, 10 minutes between cycles and it's running for three seconds each time. So it's running three seconds every 10 minutes. Uh, if that 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes is too far apart, what I'll have to do is go back and reduce the three seconds down to two seconds. And that would reduce a third of the amount of water that I'm putting on on here. But I, like I say, this tray is just kind of heavy and I, and I know I'm adding too much water to the actual soil part of this operation. No big deal. Uh, I've had a week now to uh, look at it. Uh, these lantana, which this probably won't focus on this, but this is already starting to form a callus at the bottom. Won't be long at all before uh, we get roots on these. Uh, today I'm going to take some uh, azalea cuttings off an azalea I have back here in my backyard. Uh, super, super easy, very similar cuttings to what I was doing on here. I'm going to show you uh, one detail on that and uh, I'm starting to prep for some alternative methods. I won't put any azaleas. Uh, azaleas definitely will go in my mist propagation house just from experience. Uh, they're not hard to root, but uh, they root better in a controlled environment where you're controlling the irrigation, you're controlling the humidity, controlling everything, uh, just sticking them in a box somewhere, and uh, uh, you get a very low percentage. So uh, over the course of the season, I'll show you some things that are, you know, that I would try in that kind of box. I mean, I try azaleas. If you only wanted to root a few, it's no big deal to put 20 cuttings in a box, and if you get two, you get two. That's great. Uh, but if you're trying to root and get a good percentage on them, uh, this technique uh, in the greenhouse is much better. I hope you'll be able to see this pretty well. Uh, the flowers on this azalea were right here. Uh, that's where it flowered this spring. And then from there, it has grown five new branches. Uh, we're early summer right now, and this is the perfect time to be taking these cuttings. Everything woke up a little late in my area this year, so not everything's hardened off yet. These three back here, I really kind of need to save for later. They're still a little bit, they're still a little bit flimsy. These ones right here, the color has changed a little bit on the stem, and I can go ahead and uh, take those off just like that. Uh, these azaleas, I can just prep right here. I can take the three bottom leaves off of that, and uh, I can cut somewhere up in here and take that newest growth off, and that's a good looking cutting right there uh, for an azalea. This one right here, I can do the same thing. I'll just take these bottom leaves off right there, about that. About a, uh, I'll take one more off right there. We have about a two inch space right there. We won't stick it down in the soil that far. We'll only stick it down maybe that, about that far. And then I'll take this new growth off the top again, just like that. And that's two perfect cuttings. One thing I want you to pay attention to when you're taking cuttings is this is the time of year where we could be seeing serious insect problems. Azaleas get lace bugs and the back of the leaves could potentially have little insects on them right now. They're little, uh, lace bugs are little black dots. Uh, very frequently seen on azaleas, but we don't want to take any, uh, we don't want to put any insect problems or uh, disease problems into our house. So we want to definitely make sure our plants look healthy. You see how healthy all these leaves look? See they're clean on the back? Uh, good to go. A little chewing wouldn't be any big deal because you get grasshoppers and things like that that will chew on plants, but that wouldn't be that big of a deal. So this isn't a technique you've seen me do before. Most of the time I put them in a plastic bag, but if the source plants are this close to where they're going, uh, which is in my just right across the yard. Uh, I'll bring them over, hold them together as a group, put a fresh cut on the bottom, just like that. Make sure your pruners are super sharp. And I can dip uh, this entire group 
in the rooting hormone, uh, just like that. And then stick them individually like that, pinching them down maybe three quarters of an inch down into the soil, same as I do on any of them. This is a very nice flat of evergreen azaleas. Remember, this is a cutting from uh, this year's growth. I'm near the end of June when I'm doing this. So it's, you know, this plant had flowered and then it started growing and I waited for that growth to harden off just a little bit. And there you go. That's about all I can get off that plant right now. I'll probably take another tray or two off of it later as more of uh, the material on it hardens off. Uh, over here, under my deck, I had put this box in and a few other things under here last year. I got some winter honeysuckle in there that had rooted last year in this box. It's still alive. I have a, uh, uh, this is nothing more than a plastic box. It has a few holes drilled in it. If you watch my series from last year, I actually forgot to drill these holes initially. Uh, and it's just a wooden frame box and it has a piece of uh, landscape uh, fabric or a weed block fabric uh, in the bottom of it. And then it's filled with a uh, peat and perlite mix, same as uh, what we're doing in the other trays. I am going to dump this out and uh, put fresh soil in there. We definitely do not want to uh, have a high humidity chamber like this for a year and not change the uh, soil out the following year. So uh, I'll get on that this week. And then I gotta come up with things to put in boxes back here. And I'm gonna do some other techniques as well. I rooted some figs last year in a three gallon container. I don't know if anybody saw that video who's watching this series, but I'm gonna do more of those this year. Just real simple, stick 10 cuttings in a three gallon pot with a plastic bag over it and show you how easy that is to uh, actually root things that way. So, th okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. I just got super wet right there. Uh, and I'll be back later in the week with a, uh, another propagation video. Thanks again. That was ridiculous.